Hi, it's Stuart here from the MPH team, uh, the e-learning team. So I, I'm not actually present today. I'm just going to be sitting in the background, dealing with any problems if there are any. And uh, Claire's going to be running the session. So um, we did encourage you. It's quite a small group that we've got. So if you want to speak to us, then certainly put your mic on. We're, we're just going to ask people to do a little introduction um, just now. So like I said, I'm, I'm Stuart Taylor from the e-learning team. Uh, some of you might have been in touch with us before. We sort of put the courses together once we get the stuff from the academics, so we're, you know, we're quite involved in how things go. Um, I'll hand over to Claire now, she's going to do the presentation and uh, please use the, the chat window that's there, you can see that, or uh, once you've had a go at you know, saying hello to us, then if you put your microphone back on to mute, it just saves it picking up any outside noise, but please feel free to speak to us if you want to do that, that it makes it a little bit more kind of interesting, so I'll, uh, I'll hand over to Claire now, hope you enjoy the presentation. Hello, so um, my name's Claire and I'm one of the administrators on the MPH programme. Um, so hopefully you'll have had lots of emails from me um, regarding your dissertation and things. Um, so yeah, so basically I've created a little presentation just with some of the key questions that I get asked um, about dissertation submission and that kind of stuff. Um, we won't be um, covering any dissertation content um, because I'm an administrator, not a tutor. I can't answer those questions. Um, but I will help with submission, formatting, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so as Stuart said, um, if maybe we could ask everyone just to introduce themselves um, and say maybe where you're from and um, maybe... Um, how, where you are up to in your dissertation at the minute, um, just so that I can gauge what other information you might find helpful. Um, so I think if we start with um, Diane, if that's okay, uh, I'm going to unmute your mic. So if you can just tell me where you're from and where you're up to in your dissertation. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can unmute your own mics, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Dan, can you hear okay? Okay, maybe we'll, we'll move on then to another student. Um, Julieta? Hi, hi Claire. Um, my name is Julita. Um, I'm on the final. I'm on my final year of the MPH program. My dissertation, as you know, um, I'm currently. I still. I'm still at the initial stages. I'm a bit. I'm struggling a bit because I'm. I'm on maternity leave. Just had a baby. So. Um, yeah. Oh well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, but it's it's good to let me know if you guys are struggling at any point during your dissertation, um, because it means there there might be some options available that we could discuss. Great. Um, okay, so maybe I'll have a chat with you afterwards. Um, right. I think you've, you've you've emailed me already. I, I think. Yeah. Yes. So. Yes, I have. So yeah, we'll just follow up and see how that's getting on. Okay. okay. Then um, thank you for that. If Thanks we maybe speak that. to Rachel. Hi there. Um, I'm originally from Scotland, but I'm skyping in from or wherever I'm doing um, from Australia. Oh um, wow! Um, so it's nicely five past ten. Um, this conference is being recorded, and I'm so I think this might be useful because I'm kind of trying to set up my document formatting wise and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, good. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, um, I'm getting a little bit of... All right, so uh, maybe Sharon? Hi, um, I'm Sharon Castle, um, originally from North Wales. Um, I'm currently um, living in Macclesfield. Um, 
In regards to where I'm up to um, with my dissertation, um, I'm, I've made quite a bit of progress with it, but um, probably got another eight weeks work left to before I complete it. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. Um, okay. So I believe that Diane, you. Um, oh, so you can't speak to us. Okay, no worries. Um, and Zara, you're having some problems downloading. Okay. Right, well, um, I'm going to have a go uploading my presentation. So we'll have a go at that. Okay, so if you're having any problems, I believe that Stuart will be giving you some information in the chat box. Um, okay, and if you want to ask questions at any point, um, you can pop in a message in the chat box um, or you can raise a flag I believe and let me know um, or you can just unmute your mic and ask me because um, it's quite a small group so it's okay. All right so I'll get started with the presentation then. Um, I do have another meeting at two o'clock. Yeah, so I need to run at that point. Um, but if you have any other questions, there's a survey monkey at the end of it. If you want to pop them in there, or um, you can email me afterwards. Um, just reply to the invitation to this meeting. Okay, so. So basically this presentation is about dissertation submission for September 2015 um, and basically it's not going to be about any content because I can't answer those kind of questions um, but it will be about um, how to submit um, hand helpful resources um, and things like that because I appreciate it can be quite a scary process. Um, so, uh, first thing I thought that I'd have a look at is things that you can be doing before submission. So, there's the dissertation skills unit, which hopefully you'll all have access to submit your dissertation proposal. Um, and on that, it's got some useful resources and tips and tricks on how to um, get your dissertation um, up to scratch. Um, there also is the University of Manchester Library. Um, they have some helpful resources um, there too, so feel free to go and have an explore. Um, on the Blackboard units, um, I believe that there are a few plagiarism um, topics as well. Um, and I think you can find them on the PGT online skills section. Um, what I would advise is if you are or haven't accessed or looked at the dissertation handbook yet, it's a really good place to start. Um, it's got lots of information about types of dissertations that you could be doing, um, lots of different resources. Um, so it's always a good place to start to have a good thorough read through that. Um, just because it could, um, so yeah, so that's always a good, and just bear in mind that your supervisor um, may not be able to proofread your final dissertation. Um, it's really important that you work with your supervisor over the academic year. Um, if anyone hasn't submitted a dissertation proposal and hasn't been assigned a supervisor yet, if you um, can send me an email, um, we can have a chat about that as well. So that's just from now up until June time. Um, 
in July, um, we need you to submit a notice of submission form. Now, the notice of submission form has to be submitted six weeks before you intend to submit your dissertation. So if you want to submit before September, you need to submit it six weeks before then. Um, and basically this is an online form that will be sent to you via email. So if you're thinking of submitting early, if you can let me know, I'll forward it to you. Um, although I believe on the presentation that I have emailed everyone, you can access the notice of submission form via that hyperlink here. Um, if you wish, if you're ready to, to complete that. Um, to access it, you're going to need your login um, details that you would for Blackboard. Um, and please, please double check that all the information in it is correct. Have a good thorough read through it, um, including your name, because this will appear on your degree certificate. Um, and also the address that is dis the address on the form. Check that it's correct and check that that's where you will be living um, in around December, January time, 2007, 2016, just because that's where your certificate will be sent to. If you're planning to change address, please let me know. And if you do change address, please let me know as soon as possible. Okay, so this is an example notice of submission form. Now I appreciate this is very blurry, um, so I apologize for that. So you'll be emailed a link, click on the link and log in with your username and password and it'll take you to this and it'll ask you to check your personal details, check your school and program details, to insert your dissertation title um, and then it'll check your email address and your postal address um, and it'll ask you to complete some declarations as well just to say that it's your own work um, and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the notice of submission. Has anybody got any questions at all about that? We're all okay? Okay, well, we'll just go on ahead then to things you should be thinking about August time or before. Um, so that's like getting your layout right, getting your formatting right, getting your references done, your word count and your binding. Um, please note that I advise that try and get your final copy sent to the binders as soon as possible. Please don't leave it um, until the first week of September because that is not guaranteed to get to us on time. So if you leave two or three weeks or more um, just to get it formatted, especially if you're um, sending it overseas um, and not using a monster company. Um, okay, so layout and presentation. Now in the email that I sent with the invitation to this meeting, there I sent the guidance for the presentation of top master's dissertations. So this is basically a guide that contains all the information about presentation and the layout and includes the declaration and intellectual intellectual property statement that must be included in your final submission. So that's a really good helpful document as well. Um, so layout and presentation. Um, we'd ask that you have a title page, a list of content, an abstract, your declaration and your intellectual property statement. Now if you look over you can see that this is um, sort of like a tick list of the things that you should have on it. Um, so that's that. And I'll just take you through um, what an actual, um, what should be on the front page because this is a question that um, a lot of students get a bit confused about. So on the very first page of your dissertation it should be the title page. So you should have your title of your dissertation um, and then the following words. So a dissertation submitted to the University of Manchester for the degree of Master of Public Health or Master of Research, whichever one you're doing, in the Faculty of Medical and Human Sciences. You would like your year of submissions, so that'll be 2015. 
um, candidate's name would be your own name and then candidate school would be school of medicine um, and I'm going to show you some pictures of some actual submitted dissertations so you can have a look at that as well. Uh, with regards to referencing, um, you are advised that you must reference correctly. Um, it's really important and examiners will check this. Um, there are a number of computer programs available. You might have been using one throughout your studies so far. Um, and the one that we encourage students to use is Mendeley. Now the e-learning team created um, an introductory video on how to use this software and how to check. So um, that's available on YouTube um, and on the presentation itself there'll be a hyperlink to that. Um, and you are advised to use Harvard or Vancouver referencing um, for your dissertation. Okay, does anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay. Alright, so we'll go on to referencing. So, uh, oh sorry, we'll go on to, oh, what is it? Word count. That's the next one. So there's two types of dissertations. There's the MPH dissertation, which is 10,000 to 15,000 words. Please stick to this. Try and get um, between 10,000 and 15,000. Um, and then the MRES is 15,000 to 20,000 words. The reason behind that is the MPH dissertation is worth 60 credits. However, the MRES dissertation is worth 90 credits. It's a larger piece of work. Um, so that's why the word count is different for those. Um, please expect to have marks deducted by your examiner if you do not remain within this range. So just be wary of that. Um, the word count includes the main body of the text, including headings and titles. And it excludes the first few pages of the dissertation, such as contents, declarations, um, and the title page. So we went through that. Tables are excluded, but please don't try and put large sections of text into tables um, because that they will notice that. It doesn't include your appendices, and it also doesn't include your referencing. Um, and yet again, the, the e-learning team have created a video about how to get a word count, and that's also available on the presentation. Um, if you hyperlink, it's hyperlinked. If you click here, that should take you direct to there. Um, so Jenny Blythe just asked a question. Uh, word count includes the abstract. Um, so. Um, I'll have to double check that. Um, I believe the abstract is included. Um, I will double check that for you. Okay, and 200 words. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the word count for the abstract because um, that depends on which type of dissertation that you're doing. Um, so I'll get that confirmed as well for you. Let's see, I'll just double check if there's anything in the guidance for the presentation of that. Um, and one second. I don't think there's anything in that. And I'll just have a look at the handbook as well to see if there's anything about the abstract in the handbook. Okay, so I don't believe there is. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take those questions afterwards and I'll get them answered. Um, for you and um, include them in the dissertation handbook for next year. Okay, so if anybody else has got any other questions?
Okay, so we can we can move on then with that. So um, binding. So there are there is a library binding service partner which is Hollingworth Moss. Um, and you can send a PDF of your copy of your dissertation to them and um, they will print it and bind it depending on your requirements and send it back to me. Um, there's another university, uh, there's another service um, which is MU Print um, and it's based in Manchester so um, you can also send them a PDF of your dissertation and they can bind that and send it to us as well. Um, I believe they charge a delivery fee. Um, I think it's a few, maybe ten pounds, maybe less. Um, just double check with them. Um, so, um, questions that I get is, what kind of binding? Um, what's allowed? What's not allowed? So, I have taken a few photos of some students' dissertations on the two types of binding that we um, allow. So if you look at um, the impact of green space on obesity, that's known as soft binding. It's got an acetate or plastic front sheet and then it's got a black cardboard back um, and then that has a metal spine and on the metal spine if you look at the bottom it's it's gold lettering with the type of degree, so MPH or MRES, the student's name and then the year they submitted it. So the year they submitted it should be at the bottom and the type of degree should be at the top and this should be in gold lettering and black metal spine with gold lettering. Um, the other type of binding that we accept which is more expensive is the hard binding and as you can see it has the same kind of spine so MPH K Harris 2014 but it's got a hard front and back um, so we do accept both. Um, soft binding is cheaper and we do um, advise that one um, in preference, um, but you can do either. So does anybody have any questions about binding? Okay, um, please note that um, if you submit your dissertation to be bound the day before, it's not likely to get to me in time at all and you can be penalised for that because it needs to be on my desk at 5pm the day of the deadline to ensure that everybody has the same opportunities. Um, okay, so I would advise submitting it maybe a month before, something like that. Um, once you submit it, you'll get an email from me saying that it's been submitted and stuff. Um, so you can hand it in by person or you can send it by post. Um, so that's binding. Oh, um, just on, one more, more word on binding actually. If you look at the guidance for presentations of taught dissertations, um, to allow for binding, the margin at the binding edge, so that'll be the left or right hand side depending on the page, must not be less than 40 millimetres. Um, so you just need a little bit of extra room to allow for binding. Um, okay. So actual submission. So you need to submit two hard copies. So that's the bound copies, whether it's hard bound or soft bound, to the School of Medicine Graduate Office, 1.93 Simon Building, University of Manchester. And this is my, my office address. Um, and I'll be there Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. Um, on the presentation slides as well, there will be a link to where my office is, should you wish to. Okay, so Zara's just posted, I'm on Hollingworth Moss website and it says it has a one working day service. Okay, um, what I would advise is that's leaving it really late. Um, because especially around that time, um, September could be quite little, the whole university has deadlines around that time. So personally, I wouldn't leave it to one working day beforehand, um, especially because I think Hollingworth, Hollingworth Moss is based in Leeds um, and that has to be posted to me then. So it, it 
just I, w- I would advise like a week or two not not the day before um if you wish to take that risk feel free but um i i can't accept um it was at the binders as a reason for late submission um because you have been advised beforehand um and jenny blythe you just sent a question say, can you say again the details that have to be on the spine please okay i'll just go back to that so on the spine if you look at this this slide um the second bullet point so gold lettering on the spine it needs to be the degree that you're doing at the top so that'll be the mph or the mres then um you're followed by your name your name should be in the middle and then at the bottom should be the year you're submitting so that would be 2015. okay and that needs to be in gold lettering so is that is that okay for you jenny um yeah okay cool um all right so two hard copies sent to my office please by five o'clock um if you have any problems and um that kind of stuff let me know um because then we can see what we can work with you rather than getting it late submitted and and that kind of stuff you don't want to risk that because it is a large piece of work um and then submission part two so you also need to um, submit an electronic copy of your dissertation as a pdf or word to blackboard in the dissertation skills section of blackboard so we're in the process of setting this up um so we'll have more information um about that um shortly um and there'll be a student declaration um and then you will need to upload your dissertation as if it was an assignment Um, and once uploaded you'll get in a receipt in the same way that you would with an assignment so it's the exact same way as you would for all of your assignments um, so um, hopefully that shouldn't cause too many problems um, okay so if you're going to be pressed for time um, I think maybe that's something we should have a talk about um, outside the um, discussion could you send me an email um, and let me know about that um, just because um, I don't want you to get penalised for submitting late. Um, so if there's a way around that, we can we can look into it. Um, so if you can let me know outside um, of this, that would be that would be great. All right. So just to clear up submission, um, notice of submission six weeks before. Um, you need to get it bound. You need to submit two bound copies to my office at 5 p.m. It can either be in person or it can be in the post. Um, and you need to submit an electronic copy of your dissertation on Blackboard as well before the deadline. And this needs to be the exact same as the one you've submitted um, hard copy. OK, so have anybody got any queries about that? Um, I've put my email address there. So if you have any problems, you can let me know about that. So your deadline is Friday, September 4th. Please, please, please let me know as soon as possible if you encounter any difficulties. Um, it's much easier to uh, resolve problems as they're happening rather than after the deadline um, because your dissertation will have gone for marking at that point. Um, okay. And so here's all our contact details. So the dissertation tutors, Dr. Roger Harrison. Um, program directors, Dr. Verma, um, and I'm one of the administrators, and then Paul Singleton is the other one. Okay, so Jenny's just asked a question. So when do we find out? So um, your dissertation, when it's submitted, um, there's normally a four-week marking period, and then the dissertation's a sample gets sent to the external examiner. Um, so that will take another few weeks and then there's the exam board where all of your information gets processed and um, everyone checks that all your results are correct and they're getting the right award so last year that was in mid to late November so um, I'd expect it would be similar this year um, and once you know your you may have to register for your graduation before you know your final result 
Um, but this happens university wide. I had to do it when I was an undergraduate at the university as well. Um, so you can do that and it's free of charge and it's just to say that you'll be attending if you pass. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully get your results out to you um, by the end of November. Um, as soon as I can do it, as soon as possible. Um, I don't like to leave students hanging on for no reason. Okay, um, but it is quite a bit of work, so um, it does take a little bit of time on my part to make sure everyone gets the right result. Okay, so does anybody have any questions at all? Um, one thing that I think that I haven't mentioned that you might want to know is about spacing and font size. So what they say is that it should be double or 1.5 spacing and font size 12. Um, color should only be used if it helps to explain a diagram or if it adds something to your dissertation. Um, we don't um, give marks for extra color and that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so um, has anybody got any other questions? Um, you can write to me in the chat menu or you can open up your microphone. Let's see, I'll just open everyone's mics maybe and see if we can get any questions. Okay, so has anybody got anything? Oh, we have a new message. Let's see what it says. Okay, MPHE Learning. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Stuart here. Just a, a, a little thing while people are maybe thinking of some questions. It was just about the Mendeley thing. I wondered if, if you could just let us know either by voice or um, you're in the chat. Are people using a bibliographic package for the preparation of the dissertation, and if so, maybe what you know, what ones are you using? Anybody? So, so what sort of laptop are you using, Jenny? And can you not? Uh, will they not allow you to download any of the programs? Is it a, is it an iBook? Um, do you have access? I'm, uh, I'm just wondering, Jenny. Is is it, is it the the MacBook that you're going to using EndNote at work? Okay. Um, I'd really recommend. You know, to everybody that if uh, yes, I'm using Sharon. Sorry, I'm just reading these. I'm using Mendeley, but my mic does not have the MS Word plugin. Um, sorry, um, Fazia. I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right. Um, why can't you use the plugin, the, the the MS plugin for for Word? You should just be able to install that. I I think that if if people want to, uh, I'll put my email address in. Um, for for the MPH for for the uh, e-learning team, if people want to speak to us about using one of the packages, we're we're sort of recommending Mendeley because it's free and it's quite available, you know, on a lot on, on most um, most devices. I think the main thing for it is just that it will produce your bibliography automatically if you integrate it, you know, properly with Word, or uh, it does it does work with one of the free um, word processing packages. I can't just remember its name now, but you know, at this point where you might be building up your references, your list, then uh, you know it, it just really does make it so much easier. As Claire said, there is a, a video that shows you exactly how it works. So if you go to the Mendeley website, uh, I'll just give you the address for that. There's quite a lot of self-help uh, videos there. If anyone's got any problems with this at all, we'll, we'll certainly try and do what we can to help you with it. Maybe we can log into your machine. We've got a way of doing that with your 
uh, with your permission to maybe try to help you get it set up. Get into into Mendeley um, and to EndNote. It is quite easy to get your references in there. You can drag them in. Um, I've not. I've got mine. Yeah. It, I mean, it does. You don't just have to have a Mac for it. it. As I say, it works on PCs, Macs, iPads. It works on your phone. Um, I think you get different a different experience with some of the different packages. But on a, a desktop Mac or or PC, it will work as it's meant to work, and that means that there's a an application that you have on your computer that you can then synchronise things to various different devices, and it is really quite easy. Um, we'll help you try and get that set up if anybody wanted that because it'll one it'll help you I think with your with your referencing so that you don't uh, you know misquote anybody because you can you know you put it in in the correct manner but also it will make your bibli your bibliography at the end so that should hopefully make things a bit easier so I just wanted to say that I'll put in the uh, the MPH address in case you wanted to get in touch so um, yeah we'll, we'll give you help. I'll, I'll just get the email address, um, make sure I give you the right one. So Claire, if you want to just take over. Okay, so, um, I muted you by the way. So, oh, and I'm back. So if anybody has any questions about Mendeley and that kind of stuff, um, if you want to contact the e-learning team, um, I think Stuart's going to put the email address up. Yeah, I'll just put it in um, so that will be a good place to start. Um, and then from me, um, I have one more slide. And basically, it's just um, SurveyMonkey. Um, so this is my first dissertation view session. Um, and we decided to do this rather than send out it all in email and bullet points, because we found that students find that difficult to read. So we thought we'd try something different. Um, so on the slides that I've sent to you, um, if you could have a click on the SurveyMonkey um, little link, um, I'll send that afterwards as well to everyone. Um, that would be really helpful for me to learn what you found useful, what you didn't find useful. If there's any questions you wanted to ask but you were too shy or you didn't want to be recorded, that's a good place as well. Um, and um, you know, if there's anything else that you think would be beneficial, um, that would be really good for me to know, so I can help you along with that. Okay, otherwise I think that's, um, that's everything, unless anyone else has any further questions or, or would like to know anything more. If you do, you can write me a little message or open up your microphone. Oh, well, I'm glad um, I've got some positive feedback so far, so I'm glad that was good. Um, yeah, well, in that case, as Jenny has said, um, good luck with your dissertation. Um, if you do need any any support or anything, that kind of stuff, please let me know um, in advance um, before your submission date. That would be really good. All right, then. So I think we're um, we finished. All right, well, thank you very much for coming. I hope it was useful. If you could fill out the feedback form, that'll be great. Um, and we can take it on from there. Thank you very much for coming along. Okay.